Welcome back. Happy New Year. Let's talk about what we saw in immigration in 2021, uh, both on the family side, the business side, and then specifically at the H2Bs. I'll see you after the break. Welcome to Law Great, the channel where I give you reliable information to help you make better decisions and avoid costly mistakes. Today, we're kind of going to generally talk about what we saw in immigration in 2021 and what it means uh, moving forward. Okay, I I'm going to talk about it from the perspectives that I know best, which are the H2B program and the family visas, although we'll touch on things like the EB backlogs, um, the disintegration of the EB5. Uh, regional center program and other, other things. Okay, so this is just a general discussion. Uh, we're just gonna talk, we're gonna talk frankly. And uh, the reason that I wanna do this is because, uh, you know, I'm trying to give you reliable information. And I, and I feel like I see a lot of channels that have throughout the past few years, um, given a lot of information that's meant to convey hope for things like immigration reform, that's meant to convey hope about new legislation uh, that's going to change the immigration landscape forever. And, I, and as, as I've said before, I just don't think that's, that's the reality. Um, it's not the reality because we are working within a U.S. immigration system that has historic strains being put upon it from historic backlogs and immigration courts sitting at 1.5 million to historic backlogs at USCIS, something that the work permit backlog is approaching a million cases to just closed consulates all over the world. We have programs like the EB-5 program that just haven't gotten renewed, which means that they're kind of done, at least the regional center aspect of it. And then, on the seasonal worker side, we have greater demand than ever before, even though the number of visas themselves is not going up, with the exception of a historic first in this October cycle, where we did see the first October cycle allotment of additional workers. So this leaves us within a system which, which if it were to keep going right now with, with, with no additional visas, it would still take years to get just through the backlog assuming we were within an administration that was friendly towards immigration. Because we know that that is not what's happening, because we know there are additional demands put on the system every day, new filings, new, uh, both in immigration court, USCIS, Department of State. What's actually happening is that the backlog, backlog is only getting longer and longer. So you have the system that's under strain on the one hand, on the other hand, you have a very anxious, uh, large number of people who are undocumented or in statuses like DACA, which are unsure, that are lobbying for their rights, right? That, that are lobbying, trying, trying to get some sort of new legislation passed that would open up new pathways to immigration. But the truth is that the actual operational problems of the immigration system are so profound that unless you address them, there is nowhere to go with kind of these new pathways that could be created, right? And I haven't seen any evidence that our lawmakers, lobbyists, even can fully come to grasp with just what kind of pressures there are at almost every department that carries out uh, immigration processing, immigration enforcement, immigration appeals. So what you need to be thinking about, what, what do you need to be thinking about? Number one, I think realistically, people are aware, by people I mean leadership in Congress is aware that there's this pressure. They just don't understand where it's coming from with the other kind of priorities they have, legislative priorities. They don't take the time to understand and it's politically a really volatile issue. So even those Congress people who could understand tend to stay away from it. So the operational problems, the fact that things are working, just are not getting fixed. And then you have this portion that, that you hear about in the media the most, or, or really what you hear about in the media are two things. One is trouble at the border, and the other is immigration reform. So creating new rights, creating new pathways. The truth is you can't create new pathways within a system that already is breaking at the seams. That's not being said enough. You have to fix the system, which already isn't working, in order to add additional things into it. 
And so you go, well, where does that leave us? Where, where that leaves you realistically is that it's going to take years, not one year, not two years. It's gonna take multiple administrations, multiple friendly administrations, multiple non-xenophobic administrations to actually in, try and corral just the current overload within the immigration system down to a manageable level. Only when we've done that is it going to be possible to create the political will because there will be less political fear. There will be less need to understand the broken side of the system because hopefully it will be working to put in reform. And so as you're planning your lives, one of the things that you can do that, that makes things easier is not look for solutions that aren't there. You have to work within the system as is, okay? Right now, that means that if you have an immigration case and let's say you get some sort of rejection or request for evidence, you need to make sure that you are fighting like hell to overcome whatever the request for evidence is, you need to make sure that you're going out there and asking whether the fact that you've gotten rejected is, a, is actually truly a, a true reason to get rejected because that is your chance. There is no, in the short term, maybe long term, maybe a decade, maybe a couple of decades, there is no immigration reform coming. So what you have in front of you, this chance to get an immigration benefit, that's the one you have to fight for. And you have to do it within a context of knowing that my goodness, uh, there are literally millions sometimes of people who are also within the same track who are waiting, okay? And so if I'm going to be heard, I have to be persistent. I have to be persistent in sending out congressional inquiries. I have to be persistent in using inquiry forms. I have to be persistent in calling the USCIS hotline. I can tell you from the past three years of experience, that is the only way that we're actually able to move things forward. And still I have cases that have at this point been waiting for years, right? Whether it's at the consult level or the USCIS level. And one of the things that we're really looking to develop in our practice, and I'll tell you more about this later because there could be some big announcements on the way, is, is, is a litigation practice that, that's going to look to take the government to federal court. I think increasingly, okay, within a system that again is broken operationally, is not going to see a reform. What you're just going to see is a greater need to fight and take things beyond the confines of the immigration system into the federal courts, okay? So that's really, for me, the lesson of 2021 is no imaginary future far off, you know, legislation is coming. And what you have to do is fight for what you have, okay? Within the H2B system, uh, within the H2A system, we're seeing unprecedented demand. This is a different sort of issue. And for the most part, the system is processing things, things well. Department of Labor is doing a fairly good job. Department of Homeland Security did a great job in releasing new um, visas in October, and I hope to see that in April. But on that side, it's about, um, again, being persistent because we do have these lottery-based systems. And there's two ways to be persistent. Number one is, you know, don't give up if you don't win the lottery one year. But number two is you should get in, uh, involved in lobbying efforts. You know, H2Bs and H2As are one of the bipartisan visas. You know, Republicans and Democrats uh, support seasonal legal labor. And, and there's lots of ways to get involved in lobbying to try and make the program better. Personally, I think the H2B program should be expanded. Um, it's one of our best working programs. Uh, employers are happy with it. Employees are happy with it. Uh, people are able to come work here for 10 months, go back for two months, and just rinse and repeat. It will be a lot better if we had something like the returning worker exemption back and if we had a bigger program uh, that was on an as needed basis on the H2B side, just like it is on the H2A side. And so my takeaway right on this kind of immigration generally is you have to forget about imaginary solutions that just aren't there. You have to realize that the system itself is broken and strained. And so you have to really focus on your case and fight as much as you can. In parts where it's working, like the seasonal visas, you have to be persistent and I think get involved in advocacy to, to try and expand the scope of that program, which doesn't have to be done through legislation, right? It can be done through executive uh, kind of action through the departments. And so th those are my two big things. 
right? Those are my two big things. And I had filmed an earlier version of this video I said I had to refilm that because I was just sort of despondent, like, oh, things, you know, people think that the immigration system is suddenly better because there's not an anti-immigration administration there. But the fact is that for a long time now, we've been on this trajectory of more cases, more cases, more cases, more cases, more filings, more filings, more filings, more filings, more dreadlock, more deadlock, more, you know, locked up, more locked up, more locked up, more locked up systems. And that's not getting better. And I didn't offer a solution there. So when I came back, my solution was to say, well, you really just have to focus on your own garden. You have to focus on, on the benefit that makes sense to you. And so I want you to take that into the new year and go with it. I want you to say, you know, this year is about kind of ignoring the things that aren't there, accepting the system as is, which is it's broken, it's stuck, it's slow, and fighting like hell for my case. Um, coincidentally, that's where advocates too need to focus on, in my opinion. So happy new year. Let's, let's take that as a, a, let's take what I'm telling you here as a source of energy as we go forward. And I look forward to bringing you uh, lots more reliable, helpful information on this channel in 2022. Thank you so much for your support. I appreciate all our subscribers. And if I haven't gotten to your comment yet over the break, I promise I will. There are a whole bunch of comments, which I'm so happy about. And now if you've made it this far, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, thank you so much.